Hey, what's going on guys? So in this project, we're gonna build a rock, paper, scissors game with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, no, no libraries, no frameworks or anything like that. And I think it's a good project because it's a good mix of UI and logic because obviously we need to style it. Um, we're gonna have some, you know, inserting things in the DOM. We're also gonna have some logic for the game. So I think it's a good project. And I know there's some other rock, paper, scissors Uh, tutorials on YouTube, but I haven't looked at any of those. So if you've seen any of those other ones, this is going to be different because I haven't even checked those out. Uh, but basically we're going to, you know, play rock, paper, scissors. We pick a choice here. The computer will also pick a choice and it will tell us if we win or lose. And we're going to implement a modal using just regular JavaScript, no jQuery, no bootstrap, anything like that. So if we go ahead and pick, let's say rock, you'll see that the computer chose rock as well. So it's a draw. and no score got added here. We also get this restart game button once we make our first choice. So I'll choose paper, it's another draw. Let's choose paper again and we lost because the computer chose scissors. So it's completely random. Um, you can see the computer has a score of one now. Let's choose scissors, it's another draw. I'll choose scissors again and we lost because the, the computer chose rock. So we're not doing too well, but um, we can go ahead and restart the game if we want and then it goes back to zero. So the, the game is pretty simple, but I think this is a good project for people that are in the beginner to intermediate level of learning JavaScript. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to jump into VS Code, and I already created my structure, but I haven't written any code yet. So we have our index.html, we have a JS folder with a main JS file, and then a CSS folder with a style CSS and a modal CSS. I just wanted to separate the styling for the modal from the rest of the, the styling. All right, so make sure we're going to make sure we include both of those. So let's start off with our HTML as usual. So I'm just going to add a boilerplate. Now, if you don't want to do the HTML and CSS and you want to jump to the JavaScript, I will have a, a timestamp either in the in the video or in the description or whatever, and maybe in a in a pinned comment just in case. But I would recommend going through and building the UI just because, you know, it's, we're going to be dealing with CSS. We're going to use a little bit of the grid system and so on. So let's say rock, paper. scissors for the title and let's link in both of our style sheets so we have css style and we also have modal css now i'm going to use font awesome that's where i got those images from they're actually icons so i'm going to head to fontawesome.com and they just made it so that when you click on start for free you don't just get the link you actually have to sign up and you can see i'm logged in right now and i already have a kit so you have to create this kit which gives you a link that you can put in your code i'm just going to select mine here uh, and just grab that that script tag all right and i'll have a i'll have this code in the description probably in a code pen so if you want to use this that's fine um, so i'm going to just put that uh, right here And let's make sure we put in our script tag at the bottom here and we're going to include JS slash main JS. Okay, so let's just save this and open this up. I'm using live server, which is a VS code extension and go ahead and open it up and you can see obviously it's blank, but we have our title up here. So we know that it's actually showing um, in the body. We're going to add a container. So there's not too much markup. This shouldn't should only take a few minutes. and then header. So I'm going to give this a class of header as well. And inside here, let's do an H1 rock, paper, scissors. Under the H1, we're going to have our restart button. So we're going to have a button with an ID of restart because we're going to have to, you know, get into it in the job from the JavaScript. And then we'll have a class to style it of restart dash BTN. And in here, we'll just say restart game. Okay, underneath that, we're going to have our score. I'm going to have an ID of score so that we can grab on onto it in the JavaScript and a class of score to style it. And of course, you can style it by the ID. But lately, I've been doing it this way, only using an ID if I need to, if it's going to be dynamic and I'm going to be manipulating it or, or, you know, pulling it into the JavaScript and then class for styling. So let's put a paragraph here. We'll say player. Obviously, they're going to start with zero. and the computer start with zero and then that should be it for the header. 
So underneath the header, we're just going to have an H2 here. We're going to say make your selection. And underneath the H2, we're going to have a class of choices. And this is where our three images or three icons are going to go. So we're going to use an I tag. I'm going to give each one an ID. That's how we're going to distinguish which one was clicked. And then the class, I'm going to have a class of choice. and also the font awesome classes which is FAS and then this particular icon is FA-hand-rock and let's make it pretty large we'll do FA-10x and then we'll copy that down two more times the second one is going to be hand-paper and the ID is going to be paper and this one is going to be scissors Okay, and then we'll change the icon to scissors. Kind of cool that they have these icons. And that should be it as far as the main content. Now we are going to have the modal. And the modal is going to show for now until we get to that point where we can hide it. So let's just say modal goes down here. It's going to have a class of modal. And inside here we're going to have an ID of result because we need to grab onto it from JavaScript and then a class of modal content. And then in here, let's just put an H1 and we'll say you win. And then we're just going to have an icon of what the computer chose. So let's just do FAS, FA-hand-rock and FA-10x. And then underneath that, we'll have a paragraph that just says like computer chose rock. And that should be it for our HTML. So let's save that. We take a look. It should look like this. And this down here is the modal. That's not going to be shown initially. So don't don't worry about that for now. So now let's move on to our styling and jump into style CSS. I'm going to use the Roboto font. So I'm just going to paste in that import, bringing it in from Google Fonts. I'm also going to paste in my variables. I'm using CSS custom properties here. So basically, we're just saying on the root scope, we have a primary color. dark light lose wind color just to change the color of the text based on if they're if they won or lost and then the modal duration which is the amount of time that it takes for the modal to open all right so let's go down here and let's create a simple reset we're going to say box sizing border box and just remove all the padding and margin pretty much do this in everything that I do with CSS and then for the body Oops. So for the body, we're going to add our font family, which is going to be Roboto. And let's do um, a line height. And we'll say line height 1.6 and we don't really have to do the background since it's white, but I'll just put in a white background and color will be dark gray. Okay, so let's add the container which wraps around everything. So we want to basically set a width here or a max width so it's responsive of 1100 pixels and then we want to move it to the middle. Uh let's just do margin auto and just give it an overflow of hidden. It's just standard container stuff and then I'm just going to add some padding on the left and right. We'll do 2 rem All right. So if I save that, everything except the modal should be in the middle now. Let's actually add a text align center though. Okay. So now everything's centered. Good. So next thing I'm going to do is the restart button. So restart dash btn. Now, this is going to be initially hidden when we when we first come to the game. So it will be display none. However, I want to be able to see it. So for now, I'm just going to set it to inline block. And then the background, I'm going to use a variable. So in CSS with custom properties, you use var and then add the variable here, which is dash dash light color. And color is going to be 333. Let's do a little bit of padding. So top and bottom. do 0.4 rem 1.3 left and right and let's say font size is going to be 1 rem 
and cursor I want to be a pointer because when we hover over it I want it to you know show a pointer um, let's also take away any outline so we'll say outline none and any border border none all right so we'll take a look at that real quick and there's our button um, if you actually let's add a hover state to it we'll just say restart button hover and we'll make the color or the background the primary color so we get a little hover state there we should also change whoops didn't want to do that we should change the color of the text so we can see it All right, and now I'm just going to change inline block to none because like I said, I don't want it to show right away. So if we do that now, we can't see it. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is the let's see, let's do the the score. Actually, let's do the header because there's a couple things I want to do in there. So it's actually a class of header. Uh, let's see, we're going to text align everything to the center. And I'm just going to add a margin on the top and bottom of one rem. And then the H1 in the header. I'm just going to add a margin bottom just to space things out a little bit one rem. So if we take a look at that. Okay, so we get that spacing there. Now let's deal with the score. We want it to look like this. So I'm actually going to use the grid here to just put it in two columns. So let's go right here and say score. Let's do a display grid and we're going to use grid template columns. I do have a crash course on the grid system on YouTube. I also have a, a Udemy course called Modern uh, HTML and CSS from the beginning where we go over the grid pretty in depth. So here we're going to use repeats. So basically we want to repeat twice one FR. This will give us two even columns and then let's just change the font size. We'll make it a little bigger. So 1.2 rem. All right, let's take a look. Okay, now we need to add some background color. I want this side to be blue, the other side to be black so we can target that. Let's do score. We want the paragraph, but we want the first one. So I'm going to use the pseudo selector first child. And this will choose the first paragraph and we're going to change the background to the primary color. Oops, two. So primary color and let's make the color white. Actually, we could just put we could just put the color white up here because they're both going to have the color white. And then let's we'll just grab this here and copy that down. And then this is going to be the last child. And this is whoops, this is going to be uh, dark, dark color. So let's check that out. There we go. That looks good. Um, so now we're going to do the choices, which are you know, these three things here. Now I want to use the grid here as well. I want to have three even columns. So let's go back into VS Code and let's grab the choices class and say display grid and we're going to do a grid uh, grid template columns and we're going to say repeat three times one fraction and that'll give us three columns. I'm also going to add a grid gap to separate them out a little bit. We'll do two rem and let's do a margin top to push it push everything down. We'll do three rem and let's also text align to the center. So let's check that out. Good. Now when we hover over these, I want to have a cursor. I also want to change the color. So let's uh, let's grab the choice. Uh, I guess we could just do yeah, we could just do choice because we gave each one the class of choice. And let's do cursor uh, pointer. And then let's do choice hover. And the color is going to be the primary color. And if you guys don't like that blue for the primary color, you can easily change it. 
and it'll change it wherever it is. So there we go. Good. Now, one more thing I want to do in the CSS is make this somewhat responsive because right now you can see that doesn't look too good. So I just we just need to change the size of the icons at certain breakpoints. So let's do a media query. We'll say max width. Uh, let's do 700 pixels. And I'm going to grab the choice class and set the font size to 110 pixels. All right, and then let's go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to set one for 500 pixels as well. And then we're just going to just shrink the font size down to 80 pixels. So let's check that out and, and just ignore this right now. That's the modal. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, so 700. 500. All right, good. So now we're going to deal with the modal CSS and then we should be able to move on to the JavaScript. So let's jump into modal. Now, the way this works and I do have a video showing you how to create a modal, which I actually pretty much got this code from um, the modal class is going to cover everything, this whole page, and it's going to have like a dark overlay. And then the modal content is the box in the middle. Okay, so keep that in mind. So let's go over here and let's say modal. And ultimately, we're going to display none because we don't want it to show at first, but I'm going to comment that out for now just so we can see it while we're styling it. And then let's give it a position of fixed, give it a Z index so it's on top. So Z index of one and start at the left zero uh, top zero corner. So basically, we're starting at the top left corner and saying we want it to take up the entire height and the entire width. And we're just going to set overflow to auto and set the background to an RGBA value, which is red, green, blue alpha. So three zeros is going to be black. And then for the alpha, which is basically the opacity, I'm going to do 0.5 so that it's somewhat see through. So if I save that and we take a look now, you can see we have that dark overlay. So now we want to style the content, the modal content. So let's do dot modal dash content. And give that a background of white and make sure we text align to the center. Let's do margin. I'm going to do 10% from the top and then we want it in the middle. So auto um, and then the width I'm going to set to 350. And if you guys don't like any of these values or some of these values, you can obviously change them. Uh, I'm going to give it a rounded somewhat of rounded corners. We'll do border radius 10 pixels. Let's do a three rem padding. We're going to have a box shadow. I hate typing out box shadows, so I'm going to paste this in uh, just to give us a little little bit of a shadow. Now for the animation. We don't want it to just flick on the screen, right? We want it to fade in nice and neat or nice and smooth. So let's give this an animation name because we're going to use a keyframe and we'll call this modal open. And let's set an animation duration. And for that, we're going to use our. Oh, you know what I put? We're not going to be able to you well, actually. Yeah, we will. But you know what I'm going to do is just put the modal duration in the actual whoops in the modal CSS like this and get rid of this stuff. All right. So then we can just say modal just so it's at the top. So you can change it easily enough to go looking for it. Um, and then let's see the let's just take a look at that actually. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's um, put some spacing below the heading and make this paragraph look a little better. So we'll say modal content H1 margin bottom one rem. And then let's do modal content paragraph. And I'm just going to up the font size a little bit to 1.2 rem. And add a margin top of one rem. 
All right, now we just need to add the keyframe. So because we want it to fade in nicely. So let's do at uh, keyframes and we called it modal open animation name. And we're just going to say from. So we have a from and a two. So these are the styles that we basically want. Whoops, zero styles that we want to animate. And that's the opacity. So it's going to start off with opacity zero, which is invisible, and then it's going to animate to opacity one, which is fully visible. Okay. And this is this will also have a class of either text. Actually, let's just add that real quick. So in our index HTML, we'll give this class. I'll give this H1 a class of text dash win. And we're just going to add two more things to the style sheet here, just two uh, utility classes. We're going to do text dash win, which is going to have a color of the variable win color. And then we can just uh, grab this and copy this down. This is going to be text lose. that. So if we take a look now, that's green. All right, so we should be good. We're ready to start our JavaScript. Let's just display none the modal. So in modal CSS, I'm just going to uncomment that and now that should go away. Okay, so JavaScript time. So let's jump into main JS and we're going to start off by just grabbing everything we need from the DOM. So we need our choices now. Remember that the the the, um, the icons here, they all have a class of choice. Now, we can't just use like query selector or something like that because there's more than one. So we're going to use query selector all which will put it into what's called a node list, which is kind of like an array. So let's say choices equals document dot query selector. And we want to choose. I'm sorry, query selector all. And we want to choose by the class of choice. Okay, so that'll put all the choices into basically an array. And then we want the score. So let's say document dot. I'm just going to use get element by D since we're using an ID. If you want to use query selector and a hash, that's fine. So score. Uh, let's also get the result. Okay, so these are just all things we're going to need to deal with in our JavaScript. Let's get restart. So there are restart button has an ID of restart. And we also need uh, modal. Uh, modal, I believe, is a class. So, um, you know, we'll just we'll just do query selector. Just do query selector by the class of modal and let's call this modal. Okay, so th those are the DOM elements that we need. Now, as far as keeping score, there's there's a million ways to do this, guys. I'm just going to have a scoreboard object. You spell that right? Scoreboard. So I'm going to have an object and we're going to have player. And obviously this is going to be set to zero. And then we're going to have computer and set that to zero. Okay, so we're going to have a, a bunch of different functions here. The main function that's going to be called when we click an icon, when we click one of the images is the play function. So let's create that. So we'll just say play game, say function play, and this is going to be attached to an event listener. So we're going to pass in the event parameter here. And for now, uh, let's see. Let's do let's just do a console log and remember we're going to get it by the ID. That's how we're going to distinguish what was clicked. So we can take that event parameter and do target dot ID. Now I'm going to go down here and just say event listeners and we're going to take the let's see. Um, we have to basically loop through these choices. We could use a for loop. Uh, I'm going to use a for each. So we'll just say choices dot for each. And we'll say for each choice, I'm just going to use an arrow here and we'll say choice 
dot add event listener and we want to listen for a click and then when that happens we're going to call the play function all right so let's save that and now if we go back to our application and open up our dev tools here console if i click one of these you'll see we get paper scissors and rock so that's how we're going to know which one was actually clicked so with that said let's go back up to our play here and let's let's put this in a variable so we'll say const player choice equals that um, another thing i want to do is as soon as it's clicked i want to show the restart button so we can simply just say restart and in javascript we can just take the style we can choose any style we want we want display and we want to change it from none which it's set to in the css to inline block So that way, if I go and I click, now we get restart game. Uh, one thing I do want to do, though, is just add a little bit of uh, margin to the bottom of that. So let's go back to style CSS. Let's see. Um, so we have restart button. Let's just add margin bottom one rem. All right. We can close that up, close that up. We can even oh, well, we'll leave that open. All right. So now we get a little bit of margin there. But when we first come to the game, it shouldn't show. So let's see. Next thing that we want to do is get the computer's choice. Now, obviously, we need to have some way for for the computer to generate an answer, right? A choice. So let's set a variable called computer. choice and let's set that to a function called get computer choice okay because it's you want you want to split your, your code up into functions you don't want to just do everything in one function because it, it gets really sloppy so let's put a comment here we'll say get computers choice let's say function get computer choice So the way I'm going to do this is generate a random number. So I'm going to just say const rand and in JavaScript we can take the math object and we can call the random method which will give us a random decimal. And I'm just going to I'm just going to check that. I'm going to say if rand basically break it up into three parts. So if it's less than 0.34 then let's return rock. So that will represent rock. We'll say else if the rand, if the random decimal here is less than or equal to 0.67, then it's going to return paper. Else, so basically if it's above that, then it's going to return scissors. All right. So basically there's an even chance of getting either rock paper or scissors. And I think this is a pretty good way to do it. It's it's simple and uh it's pretty self-explanatory. So now what we'll do is just test this out by doing a console log of the player choice and let's also log out the computer choice to make sure that that's working. All right. So, let's go back here. Let's click one of these. So we get rock rock. So, the first one is the player choice, second is the computer. Let's click it again, and you can see now the computer chose paper. It chose rock, rock, scissors, scissors, rock, paper. So, it's completely random. And you can see we chose paper for this one. We chose scissors here. So, we get that logic down. So, The next thing we want to do is decide who the winner is, right? So basically play the game of rock paper scissors. So let's um get rid of that and let's do const we'll have a variable called winner and we're going to have another function called get winner. Now, this is going to take in a couple things. It's going to take in um the player choice and the computer choice. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and create this function down here. Say so get game winner. Okay. 
got to be consistent. Um, get winner. And we have the player choice and the computer choice. I'm just going to call this P and C just to short it, shorten it a little bit. Um, so basically, we just need a bunch of if statements to play this game. So first one is going to be if P is equal to C. Okay, so basically, if they choose the same thing, it's going to be a draw, right? So we'll, re we'll return draw. Else, if if you guys want to pause this and try to do this yourself, I mean, obviously, I'm sure most of you know how to play rock, paper, scissors. Um, if you want to try to do it yourself, go ahead and do that. If you want to pause the video. So else if we want to say if P, so if the player is equal to rock, then in here we want another if statement. So we'll say if the computer chooses uh, paper, then paper beats rock, right? So we're going to return here computer as our winner. All right, else then we want to return the player as our winner. All right. So that's that. So that's that takes care of rock. So let's go down here and let's do another else if. And in here we're going to say if the player is equal to or chooses paper, then we need to have another if else in here. So we're going to say if the computer chooses scissors then they're going to win because scissors beats paper so we want to return computer okay else then we're going to return player because the player wins so that takes care of paper so now we'll go down here and let's say else if and we're going to say if player chooses what do we have left scissors and if the computer chooses rock then obviously they win so we're going to return computer else we're going to return player all right so that's it that's our logic for this game Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I think this is pretty simple. So that will get the winner. Now let's let's see if this actually works. So what we could do is just simply console log. You know, what we'll do is we'll console log the player choice. The uh, computer choice. And the winner and just see if that's correct. All right, so we'll choose rock. So that's a draw. That's correct. Let's choose rock again. So rock beats scissors. So player wins. Let's do it again. Draw rock beats scissors. Okay, the computer wins because paper beats rock. Rock scissors player paper draw paper beats rock. So the player wins. I'll choose scissors player wins because scissors. All right, so this it, it seems to be working. The logic is there. So now that we have the logic, we need to basically deal with the, the UI. We need to, to let the user know they won because obviously we're not going to have them open up their console. We also need to deal with the score. So we could we could break this up into a couple functions, but I'm just going to have one that's going to um, that's going to change the score also is going to show the modal. All right, so we'll call that show winner. So let's go down here and let's say function show winner. So this is going to take in the winner and it's also going to take in the computer choice because when we show the modal, we want to show what the computer choice was, whether they won or not. All right, so let's um, let's first say if the winner is the player so basically if we win then we want to increment the player score so we can take our scoreboard 
object and grab player and just increment it by one with plus plus. All right. Then we want to show um, modal result. So the way that we're going to do this is grab our result um, dom element, which is the ID of the modal. And if you don't remember, we'll just check this out. Not the modal, but the, the modal content here. Um, so we're going to grab that. And we want to insert some stuff in there. So we're going to say dot inner HTML and we're going to set this to a template string. So we use back ticks here, not quotes. And let's put an H1. Uh, yeah, H1. We can't use Emmett in here. And this is going to have a class of text win because the player won. And inside here, we'll just say you win. Uh, let's kind of. Let's uh, break this up a little bit just so it's easier to read. All right, so we have our H1, you win. Um, and then we're going to have the, the actual icon. So we're basically mimicking this, this stuff right here, right? In fact, we don't even need to have this in here because it's going to get put in dynamically so we can get rid of that. Um, So we're going to have an I class of FAS and then FA dash hand. Now this we're going to use a little trickery here um, instead of having to, you know, decide what it is and then I'll put the icon. We can just dynamically put in here either rock, paper or scissors, and that will be um, the computer choice. Right. So we'll just grab that. And put that right in there and then let's add the F.A. dash 10 X class here as well. Okay, so that will give us the icon. Now we just want our paragraph. So in the paragraph, we're going to say computer chose and I'm going to put some strong tags here just to emphasize um, what the computer chose, even though We do have the icon, but just we're going to have the word as well. Um, so this is going to be the computer choice. Like that. All right, so I think that should be it as far as if the player wins. So now right here, let's do an else if. And here we want to say if the winner that's passed in is equal to the computer. Then we're going to just going to copy this, everything we have in the winner in the player case. And paste this in here and let's change this to computer. So we want to increment the computer score and the result. We're going to say you lose. And change this to text lose. We're still going to show the computer's choice. So, so this actually isn't going to change. All right. Now we're going to do an else. The else is the draw, right? So with the draw, we're not going to touch the scoreboard. We're going to leave it as is. Um, I'm just going to copy the result in our HTML and paste that in. And I'm going to say right here. Uh, it's a draw. And just remove the class here. We don't want any class if it's a draw. And we're going to just keep this stuff here. Okay, this computer choice. So after that, after the, we go through, you know, deciding who wins, we want to go after this final else and we want to show the score. So we're going to grab the score element and enter HTML and set that to let's set some back ticks. So we have a paragraph, we'll say player and we can just simply grab the scoreboard dot player. So we'll display that. Uh, let's close our paragraph. And then we're going to do the same thing. Let's just clean this up a little bit, put this on a new line. All right, so we'll do the same thing here with the computer. So scoreboard dot computer. 
All right, so that should add the score. Now, in order for the modal to show, we need to take the modal and because right now it's displayed to none in the CSS, we just need to change the style display and set that to a uh, block display that should work. So this function does quite a bit. It, it can increases the score. It shows the modal. It shows the score. Um, so now we just need to call this up here so we can just get rid of this console log. And you can see this play function. This is our main function. This is pretty clean. We're just linking to a bunch of other functions. So let's say show winner. And this takes in the winner and it also takes in the computer choice because we need to know that regardless. All right, so let's save that and let's go back to our app here. Uh, and let's try it out. Okay, computer chooses paper, so it's a draw. Now, I don't have the functionality yet where we can close this. If I'm clicking anywhere, this, this just stays open. So this is a pretty easy fix. All we have to do is add an event listener on the window object. So we're going to say window dot add event listener. If you want to put an X button or something in the modal, you can do that as well. Um, we did that in the, the actual video where I showed you how to create the modal. But we're going to just add a click here. And we're going to call clear modal. All right, so let's go up here and let's say clear modal. function clear modal and this is going to take in an event parameter and all we need to do here we want to check to see if the e dot target is equal to modal if so then we're going to set modal dot style dot display we're going to set that to none to basically hide it So now if I go back, we see our result. If I click outside of it, it goes away. All right, uh, let's see. And you can see our score is getting added too. That's not that's something I haven't pointed out yet. So it's a draw. Let's see, I just want the computer to win. Wow, the computer sucks. Wow. There we go. So we finally lost. So the computer won. Computer won again. So you can see the score. Now we want to be able to clear this by clicking this restart. So let's add that real quick. So we're going to have one more event listener on restart. So let's say click So when we click restart, we'll have a restart game function. So let's go up here. Let's actually put this here. All right, so this restart game, we want to reset the scoreboard. So I'm going to say scoreboard dot player. We're going to set to zero scoreboard dot computer set to zero. And then we also want to uh, we need to change the HTML because that just changes it in the JavaScript. We need to change it in the UI as well. So we're going to do inner HTML equals. And take our paragraph player zero. computer zero. All right, so we'll save that. Let's try it out. Okay, so we got computer one player zero. If I click restart, it goes back to zero. Now the very last thing that I want to do when we and if you want this button to go away when you restart the game, you can just set the style display none, but I'm just, I'll just leave it. It's fine. Um, right here it says computer cho chose rock. I want this to be uppercase. So let's um, I mean, I don't have to, but 
I, I think it's a it's a good idea, and we'll just uppercase the C in chose as well. All right. Now, in order to uppercase, just I mean, we have the two uppercase method, but that will uppercase every letter. So in JavaScript, I mean, there's a there's a few ways you can do this. What I like, what I usually do, is grab the first character. So we'll say char at zero. And we want a two uppercase that so dot two uh, uppercase. So that'll uppercase the first. It'll actually only get the first um, and then uppercase it. So we want to add on to that computer choice. And then we want to get everything but the first letter because that's already being displayed. So we can do that by using slice. So slice and we basically want to start from one, which is a second character. All right. So that should do that. That should uppercase the first letter only. So I'm going to copy this and put this here. And here. All right. So now if we go back. Now we get computer chooses paper and paper is uppercase. We can restart. All right. So that's it. We have our logic. We have our styling. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little project and that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. Please subscribe if you're not and you like this kind of thing and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I just wanted to take this time to mention my Patreon. So if you want to support my work and my content for as little as a dollar per month, it's greatly appreciated. It keeps me going. I also have tiers for free Udemy courses. All patrons get access to posts and short videos just talking about what I'm working on, things like that. So if you're interested in supporting the channel directly, you can visit patreon.com slash traversymedia.